What's up guys? It's been about a week or two since I made a video, so I figured I'd do another one. Now, I've been tying a lot of these guys lately. Uh, it's really good for, you know, shallower rivers and just shallow water fishing in general. Um, it's small enough for carp, but big enough for bass, and uh, works really well. It's a little crawfish slider. Get started. It's uh, it features one of my all-time favorite materials is a uh, pine squirrel, which I just got this color in from uh, Flyfish Food. They just started carrying them. This is the uh, crawfish orange color. I just got the zonkered whole patch that I was zonkered. Um, so basically, what I use here is a size six uh, boilie hook. It's designed for carp. Uh, you know, fishing boilies and stuff off like a hair rig or something. Uh, but it's a really good carp hook to tie flies on as well. Um, I already went ahead and put on some bead chain. You get the stuff anywhere. It's uh, four millimeter, I believe. Uh, you can buy the stuff at like hardware stores um, or online, whatever. Uh, just make sure it's like a it's the they have the weighty kind, not not the cheap uh, plastic kind, because that, that doesn't do anything. It doesn't flip the hook or anything. Uh, started my thread already, tied the lead eyes in, or the dumbbells in, and worked my thread back a little bit behind the bend. I'm um, using just your standard 140 linear thread. Um, what I like to do first is put some mouth parts and stuff in. It is also going to help keep your claws separated. Um, in most of the patches of pine squirrel I've gotten uh, from various places, uh, they all have some that are not cut perfectly straight, as you can tell by the, that hide. Kind of flimsy on the end there, but we're going to make the best of that situation here, and uh, we're going to use that instead of just throwing it away. So we're going to polymer this around the hook, and it's really good. Um, one, it's already pre-tapered for you, which is kind of, you know, not really worth anything but it's just really thin so it kind of it wraps very easily and you know it's not going to go to waste so go ahead and tie that in and uh, we're going to wrap this around the hook you know four three four or five times just whatever until you're happy Just work your thread through it and catch the hide. And wrap it again. And wrap it again. Until it's nice and locked down. And catch in front of it. Take your fancy scissors and cut the hide. And I kind of work it all backwards. It's okay if you still have some hide left over just like that. We're going to secure all this even further. This is more or less just uh, to get some movement up here where the mouth stuff is. And uh, it, it bulks up the body where it needs to be because uh, all crayfish are, you know, basically shaped like triangles. They're beefier up here and kind of taper down to just their little, little flapper tail. Uh, so this kind of helps build up the underbody so you don't have to use as much dubbing. Um, so you can kind of see what we're working with already there. Uh, just a little puff of stuff, you know, it's nothing super crucial, but <clears throat> I like it. Helps the overall fly look better. Next, uh, I've been using these little buggy nymph legs from Hairline. This is just a root beer color. Um, comes like this. Uh, I usually I just take one of these off, and I cut it right in half, and then I cut it in half again. So basically, a quarter of that leg, and that's what you're left with. So. You're just going to V-tie this um, right on the hook and kind of use that hair to, to uh, keep it separated, fold it over itself, and just like this, okay? Now to measure these, I fold them 
them backwards and without trying to stretch them too much I take what's left of the shank length plus another shank length so basically right here where my fingers are I just cut it that's not really crucial it's just something to you know measure stuff by to keep it consistent uh, next I put a little bit of dubbing in to kind of control the legs and build up the body at the same time as that he's uh, Dave Whitlock's SLF dubbing this is a near enough crayfish um, orange color I love this dubbing I use this on a whole lot of my flies it just looks really good uh, I've always enjoyed this dubbing uh, now we're using dubbing to control the direction of those little legs we put in as well as build up the uh, underbody and we're creating a little prop for our little claws that we're going to put in so make a nice little dubbing ball I usually stop right at the point of the hook um, with the dubbing uh, doesn't have to be really neat or anything it's, it's going to be covered up a lot of it is anyway so that's done right at the point of the hook there next uh, you're going to take and cut some little little calls out of pine squirrel um, what I do to measure these is to flip the hook over and from the outside um, furthest most point of the uh, hook eye to right where the bend starts I cut that as the uh, the hide length uh, just for consistency um, so go ahead and tie one of these in right behind that ball just like that and I'll do the other one okay just like this alright so your body's still nice and thick where it needs to be and that's cool <clears throat> next uh, this is a Cock de Leon hen saddle um, in a uh, burnt orange color just prepare it like I've done in all the rest of my videos basically and uh, and tie that in. This is just going to create, you know, some of the leg parts um, underneath the fly. It's not going to be super visible unless you're fishing a little bit deeper of water, and it takes a little bit longer for the fly to sink. So it's not crucial that you do this at all. But go ahead and put some more dubbing on. Um, remember, uh, we're going to start tapering this here now with the body. So just take your time. I'm not like a super dubbing master as my buddy Tim, aka Yeah Trout That, on Instagram. He basically sucks at everything except dubbing. Um, so, just check him out if you like stoneflies. Dude's a freaking maniac. Um, anyway, go ahead and wrap your uh, little leggy parts through that dubbing. It doesn't have to be touch and turn. It's it's better if it's not anyway. It allows the material to move more in the water. They're not all crammed up on each other. So right now this is basically it's basically a woolly bugger, if you will, which I freaking hate that stupid fly, but it works unfortunately. I don't hate it. I love it. I just like, like to talk junk. Um, anyway, go ahead and tie it off right behind the eyeball and cut it off okay now I like to finish with just a little bit of dubbing uh, right behind that this is not crucial either I just you know like make it look nice I like to put it behind the eyes just like this it's all going to get covered up I just do it as kind of like a foundation or whatever because the next part is pretty crucial this here is a gel spun thread, 200 denier or denier or whatever you French people want to call it. Uh, it's Vibis, the brand. Um, basically, it's really, really strong thread that does not want to break on you. So, this is what I use on all my deer hair flies. And uh, that's what we're going to be using here is deer hair. So, uh, it can be intimidating, just work with it. 
and you'll get it. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> so that's kind of what it, it looks like. It, you know, that dubbing that I put on there is pretty much pointless. I just like it because it provides a grip for this thread, which is actually really uh, slippery. Um, <clears throat> now the next part is uh, I'm just going to explain what I did because I skipped I had a few steps just to save some time. Basically I got two colors of deer belly hair, a brown and an orange, and I mixed them together. Um, I used two parts of the dark, one part of the light, so basically half of the orange and twice as much as the brown. Um, to mix them, I put them in one hand and kind of shuffle them just like this, like cards. And I put them in a hair stacker. Just stuck anything. Go ahead and stack that up and uh, keep your tips facing forward because that's the direction that the tips are going to go on the fly. Uh, you're probably like, wow, dude, that is a crap ton of hair you're going to put on that little tiny hood. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it takes quite a lot to do this, make a nice little dense head up there. It's going to help keep the fly properly oriented. Um, plus, I like these little tips to be all completely frayed out because it's, it just works with this whole pattern, man. It just looks really good. So what I do, um, you kind of want the tips of this deer hair to be almost like a weed guard for this point of the hook, so it's going to stop halfway, um, kind of almost to where the barb is with that hook. So just kind of keep that in mind while you put this on there. So basically just like that. Um, that's why I have such a large amount of hair, uh, because each individual deer hair kind of tapers um, in thickness. So, you know, that kind of adds up a while. See how much thicker this is versus down here? That's why it's such a huge clump of hair. So go ahead and put that on your hook. Wrap it around once. Wrap it around twice and don't let go. I'll just completely press it down and now you can let go. Now I grab underneath the eyes and just keep pulling. Pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. Okay, now it's basically set in there. Um, I like to wrap it forward with my hand and then catch the uh, right behind the eye with my GSP and wrap a couple of times. And that's it. Now that hair's in there. Go ahead and grab your wet finish tool. Um, I know Cheech and some other deeds like to add some stuff underneath this fly, like some dubbing or whatever to cover up this, this gap, but I don't. It's kind of like a waste of time, in my opinion. No offense, dudes, but that's just my thought. Um, <clears throat> anyway, and, wow, check that out. That's crazy. Um, get your little comb and kind of comb out all this crap here. Just to make sure you have no trap fibers and stuff. Basically, it looks like carrot top right now, like a freaking Kaepernick afro. Here's my shout out to that idiot. Uh, anyway, it's kind of convenient if you have like a little box or something under here uh, while they're trimming this, but I don't right now, so we're just going to do it. Uh, get you a dull edge razor. Um, dull razor is a bad razor, so get, you know. I have a whole ton of these bolt packages here because I, I use a lot of them. But go ahead and keep in mind because you're going to take like one or two swipes of this and you're going to want a new blade. So go ahead and pull all this hair back and put the blade right in front of the eyeballs and begin to trim. And kind of just keep working it, working it, working it. You're going to follow the curve of the eye. Don't cut too much because you can't add it back. You can always cut more. Just remember that when you're trimming deer hair. It is a pain in the ass to add back. Almost impossible in many cases. Um, but you can always take off more. So just keep working it until you get the shape you like. I mean, it's not crucial that this looks good. It's more about function, but you know me. It's got to look good, man. Don't look good, you're wasting your time, in my opinion. So go ahead and just, you could rip out the long ones that just didn't quite make it. <laughs> just keep working it. Uh, and I had tacos for dinner. I got supreme burps. So that's awesome. 
So yeah, that's kind of what you're working with now. Um, so, you know, you can see why they add dubbing and stuff down here, but what I like to do is add some super glue down there instead. And that's going to seep all the way down into the hair and that big clump of dubbing that you put there that you thought was a waste of time. And what that's going to do is lock everything nice and together. And that stuff is not going to move. Literally, it is going to stay there until the entire fly is dead. So. Um, that's the way I do it. <laughs> so it's pretty quick and dirty. Um, it's not super difficult. I mean, deer hair can be intimidating, but if you tie about four or five of these in a row, I mean, you'll be pretty comfortable with it. Um, I just tied, I mean, I got it. I have like ten of them. I just did within like the last two hours, so. And that's with me taking breaks, because a lot of people know I'm the slowest tire of all time. Anyway, if you got questions, let me know. Kind of flew through that. Um, but there you go.